My name's Randy, and with the goal for the lowest combat level in mind, I welcome you back to my series. Lower. Better. Barbarian Assault, a minigame that's been around since 2007, yet no one has taken on this challenge. And today's challenge includes completing Barbarian Assault with an entire team of all level 3s. This minigame consists of 10 waves, all including NPCs which are aggressive to our characters and are decently high leveled, which will come to a conclusion with the final wave having a boss that can one hit all of our level 3 characters in the entire room. And the worst part? Well, you can't bring food inside Barbarian Assault. So once again we're taking something that seems impossible and trying to make it possible in today's episode, and if you're enjoying the series, a subscription to my channel is greatly appreciated. Since Barbarian Assault is a team-based oriented minigame, and this mission is pretty much a death wish, well, I'm going to have to find the most hardened level 3s in the entire game in order to perform this task. And well, this is who made the final cut. So even though I had found all the perfect people for this team, I still had to prepare all of the accounts. So this preparation included bonding all 5 level 3s, then sending them over to BA Services CC so I could leech attacker, defender, and collector roles to level 5 all before we started the wave 1 through 10 grind. And trust me, this was absolutely necessary. Next I went ahead and did Mountain Daughter on a couple of the accounts for maximum range defense bonus, as well as acquired some other defense bonus gear, and from there, got some stats up for a very specific quest, which would be needed on one of the accounts for the final boss. And you'll find out later, why basically both of these quests are almost necessary. So when we went into wave 1, we almost had no idea what we were doing, but we learnt as we went, and therefore, we found out quickly that the level 5 attacker role was almost necessary to get this task completed, because you would now be only hitting a minimum of 5 damage versus the 1 damage that a normal level 3 would deal. Therefore, we're able to hit between 5 and 8 damage with our normal short bows and the barbarian assault arrows provided to us. <music> 
and we believed having two attackers at the start of these waves was necessary because we basically wanted to clear the aggressive NPCs as quick as possible so they wouldn't kill all the other accounts inside of the instance. So to start off, me and Chessbrow were both attacker roles, and in order to clear the NPCs, we pretty much just brute forced the waves enough times, and therefore got through each wave up until about wave 4, where we then stumbled upon some real problems. And unfortunately no, it wasn't just Assault Bra being AFK and our attempts at a level 3 BA completion. It was something else entirely, being the way the NPCs spawned, which was the melee and ranged NPCs to the west, and the healers and runners to the east. In a typical game of Barbarian Assault, attackers stand on the west side and deal with the melee and ranged NPCs, and usually almost always have enough DPS to kill these NPCs before they start to stray south of the cannon and start attacking other members of the team. But unfortunately for us, we can't just stand on the northwestern side and attack the NPCs as they spawn outside of the cave, because well, us attackers will die almost instantly from all the aggressive NPCs coming directly at us. And since we can't just stand up north because it will lead to our attacker's death, well we're going to be revolving our NPCs around the cannon and some particular safe spots in that area. As well we'll be alternating attacks between some NPCs that we find aggressive on one attacker and not the other in order to switch its aggression. At this point, another tactic we started to use was to kite the rangers around the room while staying in their aggression zone, but not in their attack range. This was possible because the rangers have a relatively short attack range, and we are able to actually hit them with our longbows, or even shortbows if you're willing to risk it, even though they can't quite reach us. These tactics fared us pretty well up until about wave 5, but we were still relying on a lot of RNG, and difficult situations occurred quite frequently. There were many, many problems we ran into with this method, and the first just included me and Chesbra not even being able to figure out at some points which NPCs were aggressed to each one of us. This was because some NPCs would cover one another and you couldn't really tell which direction they were facing if there were so many in one tile. Also, we couldn't figure out which one to attack, well, if we just decided to move at the exact same time. So another problem we ran into was that we weren't north so therefore some of the NPCs wrapped around south of the cannon and therefore they would attack us while we were trying to deal with other NPCs and there are no true safe spots from some of these southern angles of NPC aggression. Also while kiting these NPCs we found out that if anyone was in their line of sight well their aggression would switch every 6 seconds therefore even at the western cannon when we were taking care of some of the NPCs if the healer simply ran to his pool to recharge his vial or his own HP well, those NPCs would switch aggression to him, most likely. Our amazing healer prodigy saw this happening as well, and well, he decided to grab recoils, which pushed us through wave 4 because he was literally tick healing several NPCs on him at the same time while recoiling them. As well, our defender Vanna at this point was basically clearing the runners extremely fast so we could start kiting the NPCs east and away from the western pool and therefore deal with them there while Vanna was safe spotted. Vanna BA. But now we were at wave 5, and we had too many NPCs to deal with to continue our impractical methods, so we were stuck. That is, until I decided to make my way over to the Horn of Glory.
Remember how we were able to use longbows and shortbows before when kiting the rangers and not taking any damage from doing so? Well, once again, that's because of their short attack range. And of course, in the back of the Horn of Glory, there's a set of tiles that they can't even reach you. Therefore, we're able to sit here safe spotted from every single NPC the entire wave and do as much damage as possible without any need to heal or move at all. Assault Squad. And these few tiles in the back of the Horn of Glory were basically our solutions to waves 1 through 9. And that is because nothing could touch us and we could clear the entire set of ranged and melee NPCs, then go about our way to clear the healers and runners at the very end of each wave. And although this was a true solution to these waves, we still needed to deal with some troublesome NPCs at times which got trapped in corners where we couldn't distinguish their aggression if too many NPCs were stacked on one another in the same tile. Sound familiar? Well yes, it was still a situation we had a hard time handling, but now it was less frequent and NPCs could not come at us from all angles. So, once again, if there was just a few NPCs corner trapped in a singular tile, me and Assault Bra would once again alternate our attacks till the NPC was dead. We would also only have to deal with the rangers stuck in this spot because for the melees we would be able to lure them by going to the most southern tile, taking a step out west, and then going back inside the Horn of Glory safe spot. Another issue we dealt with at the start of this wave was basically the healers would stack up because they would be aggressive towards you as well, and every time you would lure out a melee or go inside that healer's aggression zone, it would basically poison you, and if there were rangers around, it would be hard for the healer to get back to his pool in order to heal you. But we quickly found out that you are actually allowed to bring anti-venoms inside of Barbarian Assault, and they actually get rid of the poison that the healer does on your character. So, therefore, no poison damage and no need for the healer to run back to the pool so frequently. While all of this was going on as well, we had our collector at the time, Marlin, vocally shouting call changes for the attacker roles that me and Chesbra had covered. Five, four, three, two, one. He coordinated this call change with us vocally because firing the wrong arrow does 2 damage per incorrect attack and we're 10 HP, and well, using your ears isn't everyone's forte. Chest bra. <coughs> Assault bra. in my time. So, although that already sounded difficult enough just getting through wave 9, well, what we are about to pull off is about 4 times as difficult, and of course, Assault Bra decides to leave us the exact same way his parents left him. Assault Bra. So this is where our backup level 3 came in handy, despite having to launch it with a group of people all the way back up to wave 10 to match the other level 3s. And from here, as you can tell, we basically prioritized defense bonus as the most important thing in the entire game. Specifically ranged defense bonus, because that is what the queen will be using on all of our accounts, and it can max 13s. And because we're 10 HP and 1 defense, well, we had to pretty much go all out on this one. And we even went as far as to get Silver Sickles for plus 1 range defense bonus. 
and that's why Bearhead came into play on some of these accounts because it was best in slot as well. And of course, before just deciding to pray to RN Jesus to not hit over a 10 on the 5 accounts that would be standing in the room, we tried other methods. We even went as far as to find a way to smuggle phoenix necklaces which you can't typically bring into BA by using an enchant jewelry tablet on diamond necklaces. Our plan was to combine phoenix necklaces with a self-inflicting potion to trigger nulled hits similar to the ones seen in my Song of the Elves video and basically make sure the queen never hit us while loading the cannon. But unfortunately, Phoenix necklaces activating inside the minigame itself actually had a check deeming them equivalent to food and therefore were unactivatable. But soon enough I would find out having to deal with the queen and having defense bonus and being able to heal properly was probably the least of our worries. This is because although wave 10 has less NPCs to kill overall versus the prior wave 9, well, the queen always spawns after 4 minutes, therefore we're on a strict time limit to clear the room before we're even able to fire the omega egg which kills the queen. So at this point we had a couple of role changes. I switched over to collector on chest monkey, chest bra straight up left on assault bra as mentioned earlier, Sam IRL OSRS became an attacker, Kali Bob hopped on Vanna BA and switched to attacker, Zyborg hopped on BA rats and switched to defender, and lastly, will Prodigy remain Prodigy, the OG healer. So once again, yeah, 4 minute queen spawn. We tried everything starting with Prodigy even making sure that a large group of NPCs would be lured in proper safe spot placement rather than stuck in the corner by using the western cannon to stack up NPCs, then finally making a run for the Horn of Glory. Yes, Prodigy. Myself, Rats, and Prodigy would also do lures if other stray NPCs wandered into that corner pocket. These lures included the traditional west to east drag shown earlier with the meleeers on wave 1 through 9, but also we had a secondary option to deal with the rangers stuck in the corners now because of a group of spiked mushrooms being near the Horn of Glory on the final wave. Vanna B. We would use one of these mushrooms to actually run into the line of sight of one of the rangers, sacrifice one hit of damage once the ranger switched aggression at 6 seconds, then ran behind the mushroom to safe spot the ranger, and wait yet another 6 seconds for this ranger to switch aggression back to the other members of the team at the top of the Horn of Glory. From here we had 6 seconds to make it back to the safe spot with the team on the lure account before the NPC could possibly switch aggression back on us once again. So the starting lures done by Prodigy and the mushroom lure methods done by myself as well as other team members actually almost doubled our attacker's time at clearing range and melee NPCs due to much less frequent corner trapping. But unfortunately, even with all of this and constant fire from two level 5 attackers, we were never able to clear both range and melee NPCs before the queen spawn at 4 minutes, much less the runners and healers. So at this point, we were almost stuck. That is, until we found out that stackable interfaces used by the scroller takes priority over the queen spawn. The scroller is the one who holds the scroll and coordinates the team's selection before going into a game of BA. Therefore the NPC spawns within BA revolve around this player. So by having our scroller prodigy start a shield loop stall with two stackable prayer interfaces right before the 4 minute mark, we would be able to stall the queen's spawn literally for as long as he continues this infinite loop. Meaning we now had as long as possible to clear the ranged and melee NPCs. But there was one problem with this method. If Prodigy was stalling past the 4 minute mark and not all the NPCs were inside of the room, well they weren't able to spawn just like the queen. 
Also, well, he couldn't even clear the healers after we finished clearing the melee and ranged NPCs because he was the only healer in the room. So here's how we combated these issues. Sam IRL OSRS would now be a solo attacker since we had all the time in the world to clear the attacker NPCs. Vanna BA would switch to healer so that there was now two healers on the team and Vanna could clear the penance healers while Prodigy was stuck in his infinite shield loop behind the Horn of Glory. Now to get all monsters to spawn before the 4 minute mark, BA Rats would attempt to clear one runner by dropping food before all the attacker NPCs came south at the start of the wave, allowing for the other 5 runners to all come into the room. From here, he would place down food around the Horn of Glory with his level 5 defender role and basically grab all the targeted runners towards the food to keep them at bay next to the Horn of Glory and therefore making sure they don't run out of the cave to the south and despawn while Prodigy is in his infinite shield loop. At the start as well, Vanna BA would clear 3 healers, leaving 4 remaining at the capacity to spawn within the cave and making sure none were despawned. I myself would coordinate arrow calls with the attacker and then keep track of a timer to tell Prodigy when to start his shield loop right before the 4 minute mark had passed. Once the shield loop had gone on for about 5 minutes past the initial 4 minutes, Sam IRL would have cleared the room of range and melee NPCs, and the remaining 5 runners and healers that had already spawned would basically be dealt with for about another 2 minutes while Prodigy's shield loop continued. And finally from here, we could spawn the queen by Prodigy dropping his interfaces and making his way back to the pool with no NPCs left to kill besides that queen. Then I myself as the collector can grab this egg as fast as possible, toss it to the other healer at the time, Vanna BA, make my way back to the cannon with Prodigy following me for heals, while Vanna then heals others and passes the egg simultaneously. This would allow us to set the egg fire up as quick as possible only taking maybe 2-3 to three hits from the queen entirely on each of our accounts. So you can actually dupe egg fires if the scroller happens to stall the exact same tick the collector loads the cannon. Therefore, finally I will get back the completed egg, and from here I will load the egg, scream the word load at the exact same time in our voice call, to time with Prodigy for another shield loop, and have the attackers spam fire the egg to all kill the queen within a few seconds of it initially spawning. Sound complicated enough? Well, let's see how it finally played out.
And there you have it. For the first time in RuneScape history, an all level 3 team completes the entire minigame of Barbarian Assault. And hey look, we also got the speedrun world record. Just kidding, that's hours and minutes, not minutes and seconds. This video took an immense amount of theory crafting between all of us members of the team, and even some outsiders. Therefore, I wanted to shout out each of these individual members, and even the entire BA speedrunning community, for helping this become a reality. I honestly had an amazing time making this video, and it was definitely one of the most intense yet. If you all enjoyed the episode, once again a subscription to my channel here is greatly appreciated. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time on Lower the Better.